Good evening. I am so, so pleased to be here in my own home and to invite you guys here and to be a part of this remarkable evening, just reminding us all of the, the beauty that's going on in between our walls, in our own strange heads. Um, um, I want to tell you a little bit about the song I'm about to play for you. Sometimes it's a lot to take in a new piece of music and uh, lyrics. I'm going to just tell you a tiny bit about it before I start. First, I'd like to introduce you to Patty. This is my viola. She used to belong to my grandmother, whose name was Patty. And um, this is the first time that Patty and I have actually played in front of people. So she's a little shy, but, um, but I think she'll be okay. Um, it's a little daunting to play after Nadia Sirota. My, I'm used to a violin. This is kind of a first for me. So um, the words that I'm going to be singing today are from a little book uh, by a man you might know. It's from a little book I have by Igor Stravinsky called The Poetics of Music. And I am finding that the way that I usually write lyrics has kind of been un, uh, unavailable to me in this strange time. Um, my lyrics are usually about synthesizing all kinds of things that are happening in the world, in my own life, in my, uh, in my community, in my, in my emotional life. And I'm not sure how to synthesize any of this yet. And so I've, I've turned to an old favorite technique of mine called erasure poetry. And erasure poetry, uh, I was reminded of how wonderful it was um, when I'd recently discovered a book by Mary Rufel, a wonderful poet, um, uh, that had a, just a gorgeous, gorgeous poem in it. And I then was working with some students of mine on lyric writing. And one of the first things we did was we did some erasure poetry. It's when you take a text, a piece of writing, a newspaper article, a magazine article, a book, a magazine, anything, and, and you curate words. It's different from excerpting. It's more like curating. I'll give you a little sense of what it might look like or what it looks like in my case, and then I'll read you the words, and then I'll play you the piece. So. Or perhaps a more colorful iteration of what it can look like. So let me read to you what I have curated. I'm not quite sure Vigo Stravinsky would approve, but he was an experimentalist in his own right, so I, I'm going to believe that he would. The piece, by the way, is named after the chapter that this book that I took this poem, that these words from. The chapter is called The Performance of Music. So this is dedicated to all the other wonderful musicians on this evening of music. Oh, I want to say thank you also to Russ Irwin for actually funding the commissioning of this song. Thank you, Russ. Okay. In the memory forms an if. Imagine the sound of books tightly bound. The heart contains all the errors of its message. Also, the reverse is true. But no matter. No matter how music is played, imponderable factors exist. Love, the sound of love, hand in hand with these misdirected blunders. Love those who serve, love without why. Love is what for. And I want to credit that last line to my friend, the poet Raphael Osses, which he sent to me as a suggestion and then I found it on the page. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
sound of books, the sound of books, tightly bound. Contains all the errors of its message. Also, the reverse is true, but no matter, no matter how, no matter how.
Yeah. And um, now we're really thrilled to welcome Carla Kilstead to talk with us, her very beautiful piece that was also commissioned for this day, for this moment. Um, we heard earlier and uh, quite remarkable. Um, I loved your explanation also of the text and that you took the book and <laughs> did the color coding and showed it right up close. It was, you know, I think such a beautiful window into your process of working with the text and letting us see you know, your hands on uh, on the book literally and um, and then just a beautiful, beautiful performance. So thank you so much. Thank you. It's a, thank you so much for giving us all the opportunity to stay stay creative and um, and fed at home. We <laughs> really, really appreciate this. The whole evening has been so wonderful. And Carly, I think you said a moment ago before we were plugged into the public um, that you're in Cape Cod. That's home for you. It's, it's, it's where you are all the time, summer, winter, fall, spring. Um, how has this time been for you there? Um, I mean, I know you, you've been busy writing music, um, but is this, has it felt like a, a powerful creative time, um, a frustrating time that's been happening? You know, I, I, I'm an optimist at heart. So, um, I am kind of, I'm looking at it with, with interest, seeing how I feel like there's some distillation process that's going on for everyone. I have to say there as a, I, I have two young kids and I feel like people that are quarantining in real isolation have one set of psychological strangeness going on. People who are quarantining with small children have a totally opposite one. I have, haven't spent this little time alone in my whole entire life. <laughs> um, so doing, you know, doing this with uh, small children is a little bit like indentured servitude, but um, we're settling into, into something that, you know, that makes sense. Uh, we're lucky to be here. We have a beautiful, uh, you know, the, we can go outside. We have a bike path. We have the beaches. We have, we have ways of getting oxygen into our systems, which I'm really grateful for. Um, so I, I've definitely heard this of uh, friends with young kids. It, it's um, it, it's it's little house on the prairie, but to the max. You know, you're, I think you're, older kids gone. too, actually. You yeah. know, I mean, the thing which is so interesting for musicians who live their life on the road, as most of us do. Um, you know, you you get used to the rhythm of when you are on and when you are alone. And a lot of your creativity comes from being able to say, you know, this is the time that I have for myself. Mm -hmm. So the thing about the quarantine is that um, you don't get to regulate that yourself, right? It's all, you know, sort of determined for you. So yeah, I wake up, um, I go to bed early and I wake up early so that I can have a couple hours to work um, before anyone's yelled at me. <laughs> <laughs> and tell us what you're working on what you're writing uh, this... yeah i'm working on a couple a couple things right now that i'm actually really excited about there you know the the pace of them is a little slower than i'm used to but um but there's kind of three things in various stages of of uh um of of their um, of their process. One is that my, my band that I have with my husband, Matthias Bossi, and with Jeremy Flower and um, John Evans uh, called Rabbit Rabbit Radio is we're just releasing an, an, a new album of music that we wrote last year. And we're just beginning our, um, our next one. We, we release a song on the first day of every month. And uh, that's been keeping us and we've kind of stepped back on that on that productivity train and i'm actually doing that as a ratio as well i'm doing that as i'm um, using the the pema children book um when things fall apart and and doing a ratio poetry for the for the lyrics for that which has been really interesting um i'm laying the groundwork for some choral for a whole choral thing that i'm really hoping takes over the next five years of my life actually um and kind of creating a, a song book with each song written for a different treble chorus, meaning primarily women's and children's choruses around the world. And with each one, um, I'm inviting the chorus into the research phase and we'll be researching an animal on the endangered species list. The piece will be called Long for This World and we'll pick an animal from the endangered and 
um, and threatened and vulnerable species lists from the area, from the local place where that chorus lives. I'm starting actually with one, with a, doing it here at the Cape Cod Conservatory. And we'll work with um, scientists and naturalists and with educators from the indigenous um, community and do a whole six week uh, or two or, or two month process of research before we even write a piece and then bring the kids into translating those ideas into into music and and really hoping to to pull from this a whole series of pieces written for treble chorus that highlight some of the that not only kind of deepens the kids ideas of what music is for and what their community as singers and, and expressive artists can be for but but kind of gets them to as kids are having to look more and more in screens, which are less and less of like grounded place <laughs> to look more and more literally around them into their community. So I'm really super excited about that. It hasn't happened yet. I'm laying the groundwork in a bunch of different places to, to begin that. Um, and, uh, and then I'm getting to work actually um, on, a, on a piece for um, the, um, for um, the Dither Guitar Orchestra. Oh, fantastic. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so, a whole yeah. bunch of gu electric guitars, right? A lot of electric guitars. I think a couple basses, too. Yeah. A couple basses, but yeah. a whole bunch of electric guitars. So just, uh, just starting to work on that, which has been so fun to think about, because immediately that's such a spatialized situation, what you can do with... I can't remember how many, 12 or 13 of the same instrument is you can play with the volume of space. Oh, yeah. Actually, um, earlier today, Tim Brady was on, and that would be fun to check out. He was talking about some writing for this. The hundred uh, guitars. I heard that, yeah. The hundred guitars, and, and um, yeah, this is the synergy of what he's keep doing. Us, keep us doing. posted on that one. I will, absolutely. Yeah. I will. Um, I want to just uh, thank a few people since we're getting we're getting near the end. Uh, don't want to interrupt our conversation with you, but um, I I don't think we're going to have another chance to do this. So. Not about me. <laughs> <laughs> just 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 hang on here, um, Jody Elf, uh, production designer and director, and Pete Wise, live stream coordinator. Uh, Denise Burt, uh, logo design, and uh, and Lev Gordon, who's up in the studio, uh, um, helping Jody out. Uh, Kenny Salveson, executive director of Bang on a Can, and Sruli Lazaros, uh, Philippa Thompson, Tim Thomas, uh, Cassie Weiland, Brian Patuk, Adam Cuthbert. That's the, that's the whole Bang on a Can. Um, team uh, that made today happen. The Williamson Foundation for Music. Um, thanks for your support. ASCAP uh, for supporting uh, a bunch of um, the commissions today. The Howard Gilman Foundation, the New York Community Trust, New York Department of Cultural Affairs, and uh, the commissioners, uh, Stephen Glock, Margaret Cullum, Herb Leventer, Raleigh Marcus, Rob Mason, Gordon Nicole, Connie Steensma, and Rick Prince, and Russ Irwin, who commissioned Carla Kilstead's piece. Um, and we are um, we're waiting to get Terry Riley on the line, and we're not there yet, but we are going to be back on August sixteenth. Um, Wait, Wuhan, Wuhan, That's what we wanted to say. Us, <laughs> Doing it again. <laughs> yeah, okay. Jeremy Dank will be joining us, and Oliver Lake will be joining us, and Kaki King will be joining us, and we're going to have about thirty performers, and we're also going to have have ten world premieres. We're going to keep making music and paying musicians and commissioning new pieces and creating stuff and bringing it to bringing it to you. So if you, um, you know, thanks so much for tuning in. And if you bought a ticket today, thanks so much. You're, you're, you're a part of this. Thank you to um, Carla Kilstead for that beautiful work and for chatting, um, chatting with us. It's always great to hear you. That was such a beautiful performance. <laughs>